welcome to the West Beach Knits channel. I'm Laura and this is episode one of the Knitting and Sewing podcast. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as West Beach Knits and at westbeachknits.com and those areas are mainly focused on knitting and the knitting patterns from West Beach Knits. You can also find me online as petitpassions.com which is a longer running blog focusing mainly on sewing and knitting. It did start out as a lifestyle blog, but as I learned to sew and to knit, that's pretty much become my lifestyle. So over there, there's lots of tutorials and tips, um, pattern reviews um, for sewing and for knitting. And there's an Instagram there as well of Petite Passions. So if you're interested in all the things, that's one to follow as well. Some of you might recognise me from the sewing community. I am hosted, took part in hosting the Sew My Style in 2018, the Wardrobe Build Project in 2017, and I wrote a monthly column for Sew Now for a couple of years as well. So if you think I look familiar, that's probably where it's from. So I will be maintaining the Petite Passions blog as it has been um, running for quite a few years now. And over there as well, that's where I'll be hosting any knit-alongs or guides that go along with the West Beach Knits patterns. So do give both a follow and you'll get all the information, all the sewing, all the knitting that'll be over there. So this is going to be a monthly podcast and just keeping track of what I'm knitting, what I'm sewing, um, moving along the process. On my blog, that's mainly sort of the finished article and at the end of the journey, but I thought it might be interesting just to record how we're going um, throughout and finding a different way of getting in touch and connecting with all of you. So we'll be diving into knitting first and I do have quite a lot of finished objects, which has been great, but it has been mainly because my sewing machines have been stored away for months and months whilst I've been moving house and then getting them a lovely home ready. So whilst I haven't been able to sew much, I have knitted loads. So the very first finished object I've got this month is what I'm wearing. This is the Spellman sweater from Dragon Horde Yarn Designs. Okay. It is a top-down raglan increased pullover. As you can see, it's a cropped sweater. This is actually a couple of inches longer than the recommended length just because I wanted to hit it um, at the top of my jeans. It also features um, this lovely sleeve detailing of cables. There are actually bobbles as well included. It's not really my thing so I just stuck with the cables which I think are such a lovely design feature really love them. So as I said it's a top-down raglan increase sweater. So because it's only got this small amount of detailing and it is mainly stockinette it is quite a quick knit. Um, this is really easy to memorise so you're not having to follow a chart the whole way along. Um, all I did was um, use light bulb stitch markers to mark every time I did my cable increase and then counted the number of stitches every time I needed to make another one so I could really easily keep track. That also helped me to keep track of the length of the sleeves so that when I knit the second one all I had to do was count the stitch markers and make sure I had the exact same number on both sides. I would say that this is probably really accessible for um, somebody who's knit one sweater and is looking for something a bit more challenging for their second one but not really complicated because it's got all the stock in it and the way that Tristan writes her pattern there's options in there that you can use but there's also a fair amount of explanation and guidance it's really clear and really easy to follow so I really would recommend it for anyone who's looking for their second sweater or if you're just looking for a really nice solid pattern um, that you can knit up quite quickly. 
in Tristan's pattern, she also includes um, instructions for short row shaping around the neck so that the neck sits higher than the front at the back. I like the way that she described that. I use the German short row method, which I think she also actually recommends and has a little video for. Um, and I prefer that to the wrap and turn method just because the way that it um, sits at the end, the wrap, those wraps and turns, as they are, whatever they are in the German short row, actually blend in a lot more nicely. I don't know if you can see me there. So that is one of my preferred methods and I think that that has been a lot more successful than the short rows that I used in my Zweig pullover because you can actually really see those um, at the front and where the turns have been. So excellent um, pattern, really recommend that. There's also some information in there if you want some bust shaping as well. Um, I chose not to do that because the measurements just kind of fit with what I was looking for anyway. So this is knit in La Bienname Merino Sport weight yarn. The pattern is written for fingering weight yarn held with mohair and I'm not really a fan of mohair. Um, I'm in that side of the club. I know there's a lot of people who've got a lot of love for mo. Um, it's not my thing just yet. So I thought actually the sport weight might work out quite well. I used the recommended needle size and I've come up right on gauge um, with the Merino Sport. And I used the Quartz Fume colourway. It's coming out there a little bit paler, which is a lovely dusky purpley colour. I had three skeins in my stash and I really wanted to knit a sweater but I wasn't sure that I'd be able to get a whole sweater out of three skeins of sport weight yarn. I know I can out of fingering weight but I thought sport might be um, a little bit close. So that's partly why I chose the cropped sweater and I was keeping really really careful tabs of how much yarn I had left as I was going along, kept weighing when I was at the sleeves and at different points, just to make sure I had enough so that even if I did run out, I could knit. I thought maybe I could have shorter sleeves, um, but at least they'd be even. So I was keeping careful track. I was using the helical knitting method as well, just to make sure that there wasn't going to be any pooling because you can get that with hand dye yarn. Um, as it turned out, actually, these three skeins were pretty consistent so I probably could have got, got away without using the helical knitting um, to alternate the skeins but better safe than sorry. It was an easy enough knit so it didn't really um, cause too many problems and I had 40 grams left over so I'm thinking this is going to be um, maybe a pair of mittens at some point but it is really lovely yarn. It is at the more expensive end of yarn about 30 pounds a skein but it does feel lovely and um, love 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 the colour. So that is make number one. Make number two actually also uses um, La Bienname Merino in sport weight but was nowhere near as simple or uncomplicated. So over here I've got my shawl hanging out on Lady Penelope. This is Lady Penelope, my adjustable dress form. And this is the Rainer shawl by Andrea Mowry. And this shawl is, there we go, comprised of two different coloured skeins and we have lots of garter stripes and brioche more garter there, yeah, and brioche sections with, over here, an applied brioche border at the very end. So this shawl is lovely, as you can see. You've got lots of room 
to bring it around your shoulders. There we go. And around the neck as well. Really squishy. Oh, love it. Because of all the brioche, it is super squishy and soft, so you can really bunch it up around you. And this was my first time doing two colour brioche, which you can see when I start moving it around, you can see the um, contrast colour at the back. So, I mean, I would say, I was going to say, I would say this is an intermediate level pattern, but really, I think that anything is accessible for a beginner. All you need is the right instructions, you need time, you need to be prepared to do things over again, and um, just YouTube and tutorials and tips, Very Pink Knits is just a treasure trove um, if you're looking for ways to learn new stitches and techniques. Anyway, as I said, wouldn't necessarily have this as your beginner scarf or shawl, but I, it was my first time doing brioche, um, two colour brioche, and I picked it up, so <laughs> anyway, if I can manage it, anyone else can as well. And it was really lovely to knit, actually. However, problems. So my first problem was that I had, I, <laughs> I don't follow the instructions, that's the problem. So you're meant to use um, two skeins of fingering weight yarn in one colour and two skeins in another colour, about two skeins, 150 to 200 grams. And I had, I had plenty of skeins of this lovely creamy baby alpaca silk. Um, this is the powder colourway and it's used fingering weight and this is a 50 gram skein. But it's a really lovely blend of alpaca and silk. So I thought this would be fabulous to have around your neck. And it does, and it is, it gives a lovely um, halo a little bit as well without being mohair. Because you know how I feel about that. So I had this, this worked really well. And I decided to pair it with La Vienna May Merino in sport weight because actually La Vienna May Merino Sport is quite close to fingering and it's a shawl and I thought okay if the sizing is slightly different it's not the same as a sweater where um where sizing is really important so I had one skein of this which is La Vienna May Merino Sport in the damask and I thought, okay, I know that one's not enough, but maybe one might get me far enough along. So I ordered a second one and from a different source. So my first one is from the Yarn Story in Bath online. And my second skein I bought from direct from La Vienna May. Now when that came, that was actually a different colour. It, it was. Um, on my blog you can see I've got all three skeins lined up and it really is a different colour. So I thought well maybe, because I'd already cast on with this one, maybe I might be able to get to you know the border, the bottom area, so we've got lots of stripes down here, we've got that border, might be able to blend it in won't look too different, you know, what with the way that, they, they are the same colourway, it should be fine. And so I got all the way, right down, look at, look at the length of this shawl, it goes on for miles. So I got all the way down to this set here of increases. And then I had to join this second skein, the darker one. And it just was markedly different. It just looked awful. My husband was saying to me, why don't you just carry on, same as your shawl, who's going to notice? And as knitters, we know, well, 
I know, <laughs> and I notice, and it's not what I wanted. Um, here you can actually see the difference in the two. So that that is those colours, those skeins both have the same colour label. Um, I contacted La Bienname and I said, look, so I decided by that point I need to get a second skein, try and match it to this, and then I might be able to finish it off. And I know there's a cost implication in that and that didn't thrill me, but it needed to be finished, otherwise the whole thing's wasted. And they were really, really helpful. I sent them a photo of the, I actually sent them a photo of the three skeins um, that I had, which did include this, but um, so that they could see the difference in the two and see what they had on their shelves that would match to this one because this is the one that I'd got so far in. And they sent me a photo of ones that they had. Um, they suggested which one might look like it would match, and I um, and I selected one as well. And it did look from the photos like it matched this. The fact that I have this skein held in my hands tells you that it, it didn't. It actually matched the other one more closely. So, oh, actually I've got a little bit of leftovers here. Now if you put those next to each other actually really do look pretty much the same. But they're really not when they're knit up in the shawl. It's really weird. So I had to then decide, right, do I carry on with, actually I did even try that again. Again, I pulled back the old one and it was still too different. Do I carry on with the different skein or do I unravel frog the whole thing? All of this. All of this two colour brioche, which I've learned to do, all these increases, and I did unravel it because it wouldn't have been what I wanted otherwise. So I frogged the whole thing, started over again. One good thing about that is that I did a better job of resolving um, where you turn back for your increases in the brioche than I had in the original one because, let me see if I can find one, because you're, increase, you're increasing through the brioche sections, but here, can you see, is a little bit gappy when you do that, which isn't great, and through some of it, I've managed to do a better job of that than others. I'm not really sure, to be honest, how I managed it. it, was just keeping, I think it was keeping the contrast colour quite tight um, when I was doing the turns and then sort of evening, th I did a lot of evening out and blocking as well. So that's something that I would say is a bit tricky. That's the trickiest thing actually and clearly you can see that I didn't manage to resolve that. I do like how you've got this contrast on the back and how it works both ways. And I like, I like the stripe, I do like a stripe. I like how it fits when it's on. And just the feel of it. I think having this um, alpaca silk in with the shawl really is what's making it feel so lovely. So I do recommend this pattern. I recommend making sure that you have um, at least 150 grams of fingering weight in one colour <laughs> rather than buying two separate dye lots from different suppliers at different times. Don't recommend that with hand dye gel and love it. Can't wait to get to wear it more over the winter time. So that is my second big finished object. Doing quite well. I've got sweater and a shawl, so liking that. So this can go back onto Lady Penelope and hang out over there. She's also, by the way, in case you're interested, wearing a Deer and Joe Belladon skirt in 
Lady McElroy, Midnight Rose, Scuba Fabric that I bought from So Essential. So I love this fabric because just the navy and the beautiful dusky pink flowers. So that's what she's wearing at the moment with my lovely shawl. Over there. The finished objects don't stop there. I've just been going and going. Now these ones are really quick knit. So although lovely Lady Penelope's got my radar shawl by Andrew Mowry, which did take a lot of work because of the brioche. That was my complicated knit. I like to have something more complicated and that challenges the brain, as well as really simple, easy knitting that when I'm tired or when I want to also read or watch TV, that I can do that as well. And socks are a really good thing for that, particularly these socks. So I wanted to make a pair of uh, complimentary, but not quite fully matching socks for myself and my husband for Christmas. And this was in July when I started um, trying to source this. That's when I began trying to move house, mainly. That was when all the big stuff was happening and everything was getting packed away. So there are some companies that have their um, Christmas striping yarns out that they designed specifically for Christmas. I know West Yorkshire Spinners always release their different colourways. There wasn't really much around um, in July time, but there are lots of other sort of self-designing yarns. So I decided to use two skeins that looked fairly similar, one for me, one for him, in what I thought was quite festive, but not sort of overly Christmassy colours. And I settled on the Regia design line from Arn and Carlos. Um, well, Arn and Carlos have designed it for Regia. And these are skeins, you can see one example there, where you, all you have to do is knit and the pattern um, in the yarn emerges as you go. So this one that I chose for my husband is the Summer Night colourway. Okay. And this sock blocker isn't for his size. I've turned it around so it sits a bit funny. And I chose this because it's got the sort of reds and greens that are a bit festive. But also what I really liked was along here, that you've just got little speckles, which also I think are a bit um, Christmassy, a bit like snow you want to do it. So these are really lovely to knit because all you need to do is a vanilla sock pattern. So for these ones, this is, this is a men's pair, this is a 72 stitch cast on and it's knit for a size nine, nine and a half UK men's. I started with a two by two rib cuff just came down to the length that I like to stop at and knit stockinette all the way down to where I wanted to stop for the heel. And this heel is a fish lips kiss heel. And I used contrasting yarn for the heels because I wasn't sure how this was going to knit um, doing a heel flap and gusset or indeed doing a fish lips kiss heel. So this yarn for the heel is merino cashmere nylon from stranded dye works in the pigeon fancier colorway and this i had a little 10 gram skein um left over from another pair of socks and managed to get both heels that's perfect and then just carry on knitting down and as you can see i used the same yarn for the toe as well and i think that's just a standard wedge toe and decreasing every other round. Then I made sure that once I'd finished this, I didn't immediately cast on for the second one. I found this start of the pattern, wound off and started casting on. So the two pairs match perfectly. 
which is lovely. So I knit this using nine inch circulars. Normally my go-to for sock knitting is 2.5 millimeter DPNs. Um, recently actually, it's even more specific, 2.5 millimeter higher, higher sharp DPNs because I like being able to get into the um, back of the loop with those. But I did really want to give these a go, these nine inch circulars. These are Addy sock rockets. Well, they're called Addy turbos. No, they're not. They're Addy sock winder. I've got links on my website as well that compare all of the different um, sock uh, knitting needles I use. So these, I've tried once before and I didn't really get on with them much, but I thought I'd really give it a go. And actually, once I really, you do have to adjust your technique a little, but I did get these done pretty quickly with these. And because you're just knitting, there's no moving the cord around, no switching needles. I think I was reading um, Court of Thorns and Roses, got through the first book while knitting these from these. The only thing you do need is a separate needle for the heel. So I chose Fish Lips Kiss Heel because they do actually give quite good fit. Um, it's a $1 pattern on Ravelry and you get loads of information um, as well as really good photographed step-by-step -step instructions. So it is quite easy to get the hang of it. By the time I was on my second pair of socks, on my second heel, I was a whiz. But you do need a separate needle because um, you need to put your front stitches on hold. So I did dig out the um, DPNs for that. This heel is a really, really fast heel to knit because you're just boomeranging along and then you just join back in with the regular yarn. So if you're looking for a quick pair of maybe Christmas gift socks, definitely recommend get something self-striping like this. I think I bought this from the Wool Warehouse for $8.99 a skein. Get yourself Addy um, Sock Wonders or any nine inch circulars that you happen to have to hand, use fish lips, kiss heel, and you'll be away. So that was pair one. And if you need, that's so that's summer night, and the number is 03657. There we go. So that's pair one. And my contrasting yet complementary pair are these. So these are very similar but not quite the same. These are the perfect range in the Regia Arna Carlos design line. These actually I only realised this when I was getting everything together for the podcast are also summer night. So yeah no wonder I ended up with a coordinating pair. However the difference with the perfect yarns is that you're meant to have the contrasting cuff, heel and toe um, built into the yarn. So all you need to do is just start knitting and you knit your cuff until you get the colour starting and then you go down and you knit your heel when the colour starts again there. And, and so on. So the colours tell you when to begin the next phase of your sock, which is great, except um, I'm quite short and um, if I had knit these as per those um, measurements, these would be like knee high and flopping off the end of my foot. So. I was knitting two by two, and, knit, and this is actually probably longer than I normally would have a cuff, and I realised it wasn't stopping any time soon. So I cut the yarn, wound it on, and then started the colour work. And did the same again when it got to 
where I wanted it to stop, did my fish lip kiss heel, cut the yarn, wound it on, did the fish lip kiss heel, and so on. So although it's a great idea, unless you're knitting, unless you use a whole 100 gram skein in your socks, you're going to end up um, cutting yarn, winding it on and weaving in a lot more ends. So that was the only drawback, lots more ends to weave in. It wasn't as quick and straightforward as that one was. And the only thing I've noticed actually is the contrast yarn um, I don't know how or why, it seems to have knit up at slightly different gauge. So you can see it's a bit looser than the rest of the sock. And that's the same here as well, it's quite a loose cuff. I don't normally do a two by two rib, so I don't know if that's adding to it, but it's definitely a, um, it's definitely a different gauge. So that's something to think about as well. So from, just so you can see how much yarn it takes. So two sort of size nine men's, I had about 30 grams left over. From my ladies ones, I've got leftovers that look like this. And not too sure what to do with these. Obviously I can use them as scrap yarn for putting things on hold, but I'm thinking I might try and use particularly this beige yarn, cream yarn, um, with the other leftover bits, try and get maybe a pair of mittens, again another pair of mittens, um, a pair of mittens out of those, um, potentially a Christmas gift, we'll see. So that's another pair of finished objects. Like I say, definitely recommend um, giving self striping yarn and a nine inch circular a go if you're looking for a really quick knit. And that is most of my completed knitting. What I also have though are mittens, four mittens on the mitten lady. These are actually, these have been completed for a while now. And I'll show you with two different pairs. So this pair of, they're not so much mittens as wrist warmers. There we go. These are the Q Fingerless Mitts by West Beach Knits, which is me. So I've been busy designing as well as doing my um, knitting for various projects. So these have been designed as um, fingerless mitts, but with generous um, amount in the wrist. They have a leafy um, lace design down the front with some columns of elongated ribbing behind. So inspired by Kew Gardens, where we've got the beautiful lush palm tree foliage and that Victorian architecture sat behind it. These have been knit in um, Coop Knits Socks Yeah, um, again leftovers I had from another project and these are due to be released on Friday the 4th of December. They're currently with Test Knitters right now and should be out soon. So if you would like an early bird discount, do send, uh, do subscribe to the newsletter. I'll put a link down below because um, that is where they will, there will be the biggest discounts on any patterns that get released. So sign up down there and then you'll get some um, uh, extra discounts as we come along. So this is the Q, thing, these are, sorry, the Q fingerless mitts. But they're not the only pair. Also being released are the Bridalway mitts, which are a shorter pair of mittens. So they don't go all the way down like the other ones do. They do go further up though. So these one, these are my current walking mittens, loving them. So these, there we go, have a 
uh, more intricate cable pattern down the middle. They've got seed stitch columns encasing the um, cabling. And then what we have here is an asymmetric thumb gusset. So these do sit slightly differently to the side seam gusset for the thumb of the Q mittens. But that's just an extra detail in there. They look different, they're not different sizes, it's just the way they're sitting on the hands. So these have been knit in Eden Cottage Arms in their, um, I think it's Titan 4 ply, which has um, its super wash merino with some silk in there as well. So these are particularly luxurious and this is the compost colourway. These also are going to be released on Friday the 4th of December. So you've got the two patterns coming out. So those are all of my finished objects. I told you I had quite a lot. There's not a lot of the rest. What I have on my needles is over here in my uh, Laughing Stitches bag that I was very kindly gifted from the Crazy Sock Lady one of her giveaways. That's her pin there as well included, which was lovely. And in here I have hat ready to go. Um, I've managed to cast on and I'm part way through brim. This is going to be a folded brim. So it's taking a lot longer because obviously I have to do double and the way that has to be knit is slightly different. And I'm knitting this in a sparkly knit crate yarn. More sport weight. I'm all about sport weight yarn, love it. And this is um, Uru Yarn Sugared Sport in the diamond colourway. So it's a mixture of superwash merino nylon and stellina and this is going to be a gift for my nan who loves the mitts that she had and can't seem to find a, a hat anywhere apparently so I offered to knit her one. Mum's also after a hat so I've, this episode has lots of mittens I foresee lots of hats in the next episode. So that's hanging out there. That is my current whip. Dream knitting, future knitting, not yet cast on, is this the stomp sweater from We Are Knitters. I'm hoping to do a full review of the pattern um, on the channel. I've had this for a while, haven't got round to it yet because I'm in two minds as to how to do it. So I really would appreciate your comments down below as to what I should do. This is um, cotton yarn and it's knitting pieces. So it's going to be knitting on straight needles. We're going to be knitting front and back, which means I have to do a lot of purling which I don't really like doing in this lovely cotton yarn. That's the um, wine colourway. Uh, and I think this works out around about a DK weight. So I've got five skeins of this in here. And I'll be knitting this. And what I really want to do is I want to adapt the pattern so that it's knitting around instead of knit flat because there's quite a lot of stocking out on the front there and I do just think that I can knit it in the round but what's pushing me off is I've heard that cotton yarn has quite a lot of drape and actually you need the seams from where you've joined the pieces together to give it enough structure so that it doesn't just go all floopy and, and floppy and hang around. So 
I need to do a bit more research, but please do let me know in the comments below whether I can go ahead and just do this in the round, adapting the pattern, or whether I really need to be a good girl and just be an adult and um, learn to purl on straight needles. Not learn to, just get on with it. We'll see. We'll see how that goes on. Please let me know what you think. I actually really need some help on that. And so with knitting, only one other thing left, and that is stash acquisitions. I've been a naughty girl. I, shouldn't, I don't need to buy yarn. I've got plenty of yarn. Anyway, I did. So when I bought the um, damask skein from La Vienna May to match um, the existing skein in the, in the Rainer shawl, I was looking around and they have on their website um, happy accidents and um, seconds. So the yarn is still the exact same quality, it's just the colourway hasn't quite turned out to match um, their standards. So God knows what happened with that, but moving on. And I found this lovely uh, Winterfell colourway. This is on the Cash Merino base, so it's fingering weight, 75% um, merino, 15% cashmere, 10% nylon. And this, I think, is in there because it's got a little too much black in there. So I bought this. Um, again, online it looks a slightly different colour. I bought it to match some other blues. It's very different. It's not going to work for that project because I've got two skeins for something else, which isn't enough for the sweater. So I need a third skein to figure it out. But um, weekend just gone. Um, they had a sale in line with the Bass Nolan knit event and was it 20 or 25 percent off? I think it was a discount. So I decided to buy two skeins of Cash Merino in the Winterfell colourway, hoping that although this one is a second and doesn't quite match, they would match enough. So, let's tell me what you think. We'll see if they come out right. So this one here is the seconds. This one here is the regular colourway. So looking at it, I can see there is a little bit more black in my original skein, but it's not a lot. So, hopefully, sorry, I'm keeping that way around so you can see. Hopefully I might be able to blend them nicely with an Gorgeous navy jumper. Yeah, I'll have to think about that. What I'd really like to do is navy and then some like real hot pink or something in a contrast colour yoke. But we'll see how we get on. <laughs> I've already got loads of uh, projects on the go. So that is all my knitting content, which is quite a lot. I don't normally have this much every month. But what with one thing and another, that's how it's turned out. What I also have, though, is some sewing. Again, not a lot. Again, because of the house move. But the main thing that I have managed to do is to finish my quilt. Okay, so here is my quilt. I think I'm going to have to insert a picture of it because it's five feet square. Okay, so at the moment, all you can see is the negative space, free motion, stitching, and we're starting to come across some of the patches. It's upside down. No wonder, all of that free motion, negative space is nice at the bottom. Here you go. This is the feathered arrows pattern which is a free pattern from what used to be Blueprint. So I'm not too sure if it's still available because um, Blueprint has now reverted back to Craftsy. I will try and link, I'll put in the link that I've got and you can see if it, um, and we'll see if it works. So this design, 
nice and geometric. Again, you can see that I like the stripes. All of these sections are using Liberty fabrics, um, fat quarters that I sourced from Sewbox. And Sewbox are an online retailer here in the UK and they're really good for Liberty fabrics at a slightly lower cost than Liberty themselves. Their shipping is certainly cheaper. Liberty. Um, and sometimes you can get a discount using the code SOBOX10. So let's see how you got on with that. But I really love, this is my favourite one, that dark blue. But I really enjoyed this quilt. It has been a long time coming. I started it, I started it around the first lockdown. So that was March and we are now at the end of November. But it's been something I've been picking up and going back to, picking up and going back to. Uh, cutting out takes a long time because all of these need to be precisely cut and measured. Piecing takes a while. Um, once I, silly me, I thought oh, once I've got the, the, the top, uh, the quilt top pieced together, oh that's pretty much done. No, it's not. I mean, that's just like the start of it because the whole thing needs to be quilted. This is one of my favourite bits down there. I like the um, ferny design. So this is my first ever go at free motion quilting. I used, again, it was blueprint at the time, but they had loads of free access because of the lockdowns. Um, that were happening over the world. So I just binge watched everything I could find on free motion quilting and beginning free motion quilting. Um, I bought myself a free motion quilting foot and got on with it. And I did, this is not my only practice. <laughs> this was not my actual first practice. I had to go on some off cuts and then I also did a little, um, sewing mat here for my machine just to really practice and see how it worked on these same fabrics so I used the remnants in that there um, and picked out my favourite patterns and how they looked. The backing also Liberty and that was also the inspiration for the designs so I don't know if you can see it on there because it's quite intricate but it's quite leafy um, and vines on there um, similarly, the backing there, also vines um, and that kind of design. So I tried to work that in with the free motion quilting. Um, you can see some of the larger panels, you might be able to see, I've tried to put in um, flowers, leaves, uh, and so on. I tried as well over on, um, that's upside down again, there's my flowers. There we go, sorry. There we go, I tried to get a uh, rose in there, built up around. So wherever I had large portions that's where my thick flower went and then We've got the ferny design up the columns and on the borders as well. Now, as I said, this measures five feet square. I bought most of the Liberty fabric, as I said, from Sewbox. The um, quilting batting that sits in the middle, I bought from Minerva.com. Again, I'll leave links to everything um, in the description box down below. This will also feature on the blog in a lot more detail. So yeah, five feet square. It's quite big, fits over a double bed. And that's the machine I did it on. So this is just a regular sewing machine. It cost about 250 pounds from John Lewis, which is a department store here in the UK. It's it's a Janome 
model 7025, which um, you only get from John Lewis, it's their branded one, but it's basically a 525S, which they used in the original Sewing Bee series. And as you can see, there's not a lot of space there, but I did manage to get this enormous quilt, it's enormous to me, through there, and it's not by rolling up the sides, no, it's just by shoving it in. That's how you do it. You move it around and then you do a bit of manhandling and it, and it works. So that is my main finished object. The only thing I'm not very happy with is my binding because I stupidly, I attached one side, I folded it over and I just went and machine stitched the, the back and really what I, want, what I should have done is hand stitched it because you can see some bits there maybe you can see it where I've not been able I've missed the ditch on the other side and gone a little bit over it's not it's not a huge mistake but there's a lot of work that's gone into this and it's really nice fabric as well so it just attracts a little bit so that's ready to keep you warm in winter time as I said I will try and photograph this and put all of those details on the blog as well as all the links to the suppliers in there. That's my finished object for sewing. Like I said, I haven't had my machines, so I haven't really done much. I've done actually pretty much no sewing, garment sewing this year. I made um, I've made like two dresses and a pair of trousers. And that's it, it's all been quilts and bags and things like that. That's just about to change though with my other stash positions. Well, a bit mad um, with plans. So, first thing up on the cutting table, I've got it already cut out, ready to go. I just need to actually sew it. Is the Ness skirt from Tilly the Buttons. I'm going to make the shorter version so it sits above the knee although according to the measurements it is pretty much knee length so i might shorten it a little bit more because i just wanted a denim skirt just to wear with tights and, and jumpers nice. in um autumn winter time um i've got i had all of the materials ready i didn't have to order anything in so there really is no excuse for me not getting this done by the next time we meet I'm using a stretch um, indigo denim and I don't know where it's from because it was a gift from my lovely auntie. Um, I don't think you're meant to use stretch denim but we'll see how we get on. I've got stretch interfacing as well that I can use for knit interfacing that I can use for the waistband that I used on my Mia jeans and that's turned out fine so should be okay. So that is uh, next project. Also coming up, okay, so this is where we really will see how far I managed to get along because I have been buying. I what I find that I'm wearing my Molly dress quite a lot, like I say, tights and really nice thick warm ones rather than always in jeans. So I thought I'll try and get a few more and I ordered this French Terry from Fabric Godmother. So this is a Modal French Terry, um, which means it's got a little bit of viscose in there and it's got a bit more drape um, than my other French Terry fabrics, uh, which I didn't really factor in when I was buying it. I was just thinking of the lovely softness, which it is really soft, but I'm not too sure that this is going to have enough structure for the um, type of sweater dress that I've got in mind. So I've got one and a half metres of it, which is more than enough for a dress um, for me. But I'm just debating what pattern to use now. Because um, I really do want a wintry dress, but I just don't, I think it's got too much drape. That's it doubled over as well. Uh, it might be too light. So this, I'm considering just going ahead and cutting out 
the pattern that I want it and sewing it up and if it doesn't work then just chopping it off and making it into a jumper which it can be easily but I really want the length of the dress there so that's fabric number one fabric number two oh we noticed a theme <laughs> I don't know why I ended up buying two nearly identically coloured fabrics so this is the um, John Cowdor Isabella wool fabric from So Essential. Now Lucy from So Essential and the So Essential blog raves about this fabric. And I can see why it is on the one hand lightweight and as you can see plenty of lovely drapes there. But I can see that it will be really warm. So definitely far too light for the kind of dress that I'm thinking of for the other fabric but I can certainly get a um, sweater long long sleeved high neck top which I just need loads of to be honest I'm thinking I might maybe be able to squeeze out a top and a t-shirt we'll see I'm planning on using now I have eight um, seam worker stories um, which I would have been my go-to but I'm thinking of doing something different using a different pattern for a change and the one I'm thinking of is the Freya sweater from Tilly and the Buttons stretch book I use this pattern for my t-shirt dress actually and it worked really well and I would really like to give that a go and also to give a go at the sort of higher neck on there so we'll see how we go um, as to how that turns out but whilst I've got the book out I just have to say this is a fabulous pair of patterns I have been wearing my Stella hoodie loads. I have a summer and a winter hoodie. Um, you can go check them out on the blog. The grey one is my winter one. My stripy, actually I don't think stripy one's on the blog. I've got a lovely blue stripy one in French terry. But it's a really good pattern and um, really easy to wear. And the joggers as well. I'm not quite into the joggers yet, but we'll be soon when it's really cold and I want to be slouchy. And these are super, super quick and simple. So definitely recommend this book if you're looking for some um, easy patterns for knit fabrics. And you don't have to have an overlocker, you can use a regular sewing machine. And actually some of the time I do, I, my joggers I use just a regular sewing machine because overlockers can be fiddly, particularly if you're trying to change the threads. So, yeah, chilly in the bottom of the stretch. Fabric buying doesn't stop there. Clearly I'm very ambitious. I don't need to buy more fabric, but I have been. Um, I was thinking of another dress, I do love making dresses, um, for work, and bought this this is a John Cowdor stretch fabric, fabric, can't remember the name of it, we'll link it. Um, so you can see it's got some stretch, but I don't know if you can also see, it's got some te texture there as well. So I bought this in navy and in red. There we go. Thinking that I could do a really nice colour block dress, red at the top, navy at the bottom, something like that. Again though, it's too thin, it's, it's not, I should have bought suiting fabric really, I think, or gone for a more crepe. These knits are lovely, but they're too thin for what I originally had in mind. However, I still think I probably will make something and it probably still will be for work um, but will probably be a lighter weight um, 
knit, you know, for when it starts getting hot in the summertime. Because where I work, there's no air conditioning ever. So we'll see. You won't be seeing this fabric for a long time. The other ones, um, both the same colour, hopefully will be in next month's episode. This don't expect to see till May. Unless, you know, I get really, really productive. Other stack positions. Yeah. Patterns. Again, don't need patterns. But I'm buying them. I... Th these need a bit of talking about. So, closet core patterns were lovely and had an amazing um, Thanksgiving discount, 25%. Um, a few weeks ago, and, and I, I had in mind to make a blazer out of some suiting fabric, which, so, right fabric, wrong colour, um, that I've had for ages, and I thought I could make a um, nice, smart, casual blazer out of it. So I was really interested in the Jaseek pattern, and I thought, whilst I'm ordering, I'm paying for postage, and it's 25% off, I'll have another, and bought the Sasha trousers as well. Um, and you can get these, you can get patterns in PDFs, but I've kind of gone off that for a while, um, just because I really do like having the printed pattern. Um, I know you can get the patterns printed as well, and I do use Dotty Print for that a lot, but I just like having the envelope instructions and everything in one place. So I bought these two patterns and I did my calculations and all the ship it, although the shipping is quite a lot, um, with the discount and the conversion from British pounds to Canadian dollars, it worked, still worked out cheaper than um, buying here in the UK. Yeah, and then it wasn't because I'd forgotten about the um, customs charges. So what happens is you, you order your products and they arrive in the UK and then um, the customs team send you a little grey card in the post and you pay VAT on the products, which is fine. So these two, um, was about £4 worth of VAT, plus an £8 handling charge. So no matter what VAT you're paying, you've got to pay £8. So it then increased the price up to buy £12 and then that made it the exact same as buying it both of them here in the UK from the suppliers I normally would buy from. So I've learned my lesson in that really do make sure to shop local, remember those customs charges because I've been stung before, you would have thought I'd have remembered but I didn't, um, and support local UK businesses. So that's what I'll be doing in future but thank you Closet Core Patterns for the lovely discount and I would love to say that by January that will be made. We'll see. I'm still not getting a lot of sewing done. And we've already got one, two, three, three projects on the go. And this is quite a big one. But you never know. You never know. So that is all of my finished objects, my works in progress and my plans for sewing and knitting. Um, so that's actually pretty much the end of episode one. I will put links to as many things as I can in the description box back down below and where there are more detailed um, descriptions um, or tutorials or anything that links to what I've mentioned on the Petit Fashions blog. I'll link that down there as well. So the next time we see each other will be in December because I'm actually planning on doing Vlogmas this year. This is the first December ever um, and likely to be the first December for a long time that I'm not going to be working which gives plenty of time for all the crafting. <laughs> Good because I've got a lot to do clearly and um, so I thought I'll just um, get on board with Vlogmas and see how much crafting I actually manage and getting ready for Christmas and um, just getting excited about 
feeling festive. So do hit the subscribe button and you can see how I'm getting on with Vlogmas there. I'll also be posting episode two in about a month's time. So that will be heading up around Christmas time too. Um, and I really look forward to seeing you then. Do make sure that you subscribe to the newsletter down below because I will be sending out discounts pretty soon. You get a discount for your first West Beach and its purchase on Ravelry. Um, at the moment, I can't activate the same um, discount on the other platforms I'm using to sell the patterns. But you can also um, purchase patterns through Etsy, Payhip and Lovecrafts to start with. Because I wanted to make sure that there's enough variety um, there because not everybody is able to access Ravelry right now. So there are options and we'll see which ones um, actually people need. So do make sure you hit the um, link for the newsletter subscription because not only will you end up with um, coupon for any purchase, any new releases will be coming through there as well. So that will be a really good one to um, make sure you signed up to, as well as giving us a like and subscribe, um, which would be great. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me and seeing what I'm what I've made, what I'm making, and I look forward to checking in with you again, and we'll see what the reality is to the plans and how far I've managed to get along with that. And um, I hope that you will have a lovely rest of day, rest of week, and I'll be seeing you soon. Bye.